I'm John Barklow and I'm the Senior Product Manager of Hunting at Sika Gear and I'm here to give you some tips and tricks on how to prepare and what to do when you're hunting in grizzly bear country. So I live in Montana, kind of the heart of grizzly bear country and I've learned over the years hunting there and also living in Alaska that you have to factor the bears and your preparation for that in your pre-trip planning. So the first thing that probably comes to mind to people is what type of weapon system am I going to use to protect myself if I need against a bear? So if you're rifle hunting, that probably is fairly common where you're like, yeah, I'm going to bring my rifle. But oftentimes, you know, is your rifle going to be on you? Is your rifle going to be in your tent? Is your rifle going to be leaning against a tree? So you have to consider what your secondary is or what we call our secondary. So are you going to bring a pistol to back you up on the rifle when you're say going to relieve yourself or I'm just going down to get some water, watch my rifle, I'll be right back. The other choice is, am I going to bring bear spray? And so that really is the dilemma, right? That is always a conversation. Is it bear spray? Is it a firearm? I would tell you that I've carried both. On a rare occasion, I will carry both at the same time. But really, no matter which one you choose, I think you have to feel confident in it because you need to feel confident that you're able to go out there and live with these bears. But you also need to be competent with it. So you have to make sure that if you are carrying a pistol, that one, you can carry it where it's easily accessible. Is it gonna be on your pack? What if you drop your pack? Are you gonna carry it on your optics harness? Which way am I gonna carry it? I personally do not care for pistols that point to the left or right because I'm always sweeping my buddy. So how am I gonna carry that? Can I get it out? And then train with that so that you can quickly pull it out and engage and you need to shoot quickly, accurately, and make sure you feel comfortable with that and are competent with that weapon. Oftentimes, people will default to bear spray, one, because it's a non-lethal weapon, two, it's easier to use, but you also need to train with bear spray. So what I'll do is I'll take some old expired canisters. Once a year, I generally have at least one, and I will go out and I will practice with that. And what I will do in my head is I will register the distance that that spray will cover, how wide that spray will cover, and honestly, even if I'm uh, got the wind in my favor at my back, I will still end up getting some of that pepper in my nose, in my eyes, and understanding the effects that it could have on you is really important. The other thing is, where are you going to carry it? So are you going to carry it on your pack? Are you going to carry it on your optics harness? If you carry it in your pack, again, if you drop it for a stalk, maybe that's when you run into the bear. Will you carry it on your optics harness? Can you shoot your bow? Will it interfere with how you shoulder a rifle? But the thing I like about carrying it on my chest is, if I can't pull it out and deploy it quick enough, can I at least engage the trigger? If I'm down on my back and the bear's on top of me, can I at least engage the trigger to get that bear off me? These are all things we have to consider when we're preparing to go into grizzly country. Then once we get out there, we need to stay, I would say, nimble. We need to stay aware. We need to keep situational awareness. So two years ago, I was hunting in Montana inside the Bob Marshall Wilderness known for its grizzly bears. First thing we ran into, we ran into a somewhat appeared naturally killed cow elk. So that got our radar up. Hey, there's already a dead large animal here that could attract bears over the next couple of days. We need to be aware of that. Several days later, my buddy killed a really nice bull. So we processed that and we started getting that out of the field. But now we had two carcasses that we had to somehow maneuver around. So areas we wanted to go to, we knew we couldn't go to those anymore. We had to check those off the list. Even though it was a big area, we didn't want to go over there. We went to a third area after we got our buddy's bull processed, and guess what we ran into? A stray beef cow that had died, looked like from natural causes. This was enough to push us out of the area. We had to say, listen, there's too many odds stacked against us. We're in bear country. It's their area. We shouldn't be here. On our way out, what did we run into? A sow with three cubs. So we were done. We had to cut our hunt short. We had to pull stakes and we had to go somewhere else. These are things you have to consider. You can't sit there and go, no, I'm at the top of the food chain. You have to realize when you go into grizzly country, you are not at the top of the food chain anymore. Other things to consider is how you're gonna store your food. Some areas require you by law that you carry it and store it in some kind of bear container. I don't particularly care for that. Living in Alaska, we would hang it in a tree if we could. We'd always bring a small electric fence, which is always a good idea 
Sounds like a lot, very small, very lightweight, very inexpensive to have, but you have to consider these things. I'm always gonna camp and cook away from each other by several hundred yards so that if the bear comes in, he's not coming to me in my tent, he's coming to my cook shack. So all these things are things we have to consider. People who live in grizzly country and kind of deal with this on a daily basis, not as big a deal, but if this is something new to you, you really need to consider the weapon of choice, stay nimble, keep an open mind, stay engaged, and understand that at the end of the day, you are not at the top of the food chain in grizzly country.